Good day, a very good afternoon to all of you today and welcome to our Battery Hub channel, uh, our professional series uh, where we invite uh, professionals and industry experts for our live chat. And um, today we have a very special guest. In fact, it's one of the youngest guests we ever had on our Battery Hub channel. We have our guest speaker today, S. Vishalani. Uh, uh, just to give you a, a, a overview of Vishalani or a brief introduction about Vishalani. Now, she is the current national public speaking champion. Uh, she actually competed about uh, against 300 other participants uh, from different schools from Singapore. And yes, she's a student uh, in Tanjo Katong Girls. And uh, she also is uh, uh, known to be a, a young game changer, someone who likes to do things differently uh, and dares to go ahead uh, doing things differently. Now, uh, Vishalani is a student, as I said, uh, who has won numerous uh, uh, speech competitions, including uh, the national speaking competition, and uh, who always seeks new challenges and opportunities to grow and make an impact to others. Now, join us uh, as Vishalini shares a journey, her challenges and failures, and a mindset shift uh, to achieve maximum performance before having a uh, first taste of success. All right. So, um, uh, let us now uh, invite upon Vishalini. Hello, Vishalini. Hi, good afternoon. How are you? Oh, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, I'm really enjoying myself doing all the live chats. And how are you, Vishalani? I'm actually very good. Yeah, we just ended school, so I'm quite tired. But at the same time, I'm very, very excited to be here at the Battery Lab live chat. Cool. And uh, I would like to thank you, first of all, you know, uh, usually I'll tell all the professionals out there, you know, thank you to come admit your busy schedule. And I think same to you as well, you know, admit your busy schedule doing your home-based learning. Uh, you still were fine to join us uh, our chat at 2 p.m so i believe uh, you know you are on our live chat right just right after your your school ended yeah i'm actually oh. very honored and humbled to be here in the battery lab live chat yeah right, share right. my experiences with people definitely definitely and we are definitely also honored uh, for you to be in our live chat uh, especially you know as i said uh, our youngest uh, guest speaker so far and uh, vishalani uh, another thing is that uh, before we move on, I would like to just uh, thank all our viewers who are right now uh, who have joined us and feel free uh, along the, uh, the, the course of our live chat to engage Vishalini with your questions and uh, you know, uh, feel free to our Facebook, Battery Lab Facebook uh, page. Uh, and with that, Vishalini, so let's talk about yourself, you know, your journey as a student, uh, uh, till now, you know, your, your current success, you're still young. I'm sure you have a long way to go, but, you know, maybe about yourself. Okay, as a student now, I'm studying in Tanjo Katong Girls School. And of course, as a student, life is quite difficult because a student has her very own challenges. And some of the challenges are like the workload. Teachers give a lot of homework. And not only that, we also have other commitments like CCAs and sports that we usually play. So my CCA is the Literary and Debating Society. We actually have quite a lot of work to do because we have to write articles and also prepare for speeches for our public speaking seminars. And yeah, those are the set of challenges that I have. But apart from school life and CCA life, I actually try to squeeze in my very own interests. And some of my interests are public speaking and, you know, playing football or other sports. And yes, um, it's a very common problem or challenge that most students always say, you know, a lot, uh, having a lot of homework and so on. And I think uh, that's the most important thing, you know, the ability to balance your academic um, uh, commitments with things that you love to do, your passion. And I yeah. think this is where we are going to focus a lot on that, you know, uh, how do you actually balance both your uh, expectations and your requirements uh, to achieve well or do well in your studies and at the same time embark on your passion. Uh, which is, of course, uh, speaking. And uh, right now, you just tell us that you are actually a part of your Tanjo Katong Girls Literary Club. So I'm sure there's a lot more that you can share. Um, all right. And Vishali, I also noticed that um, uh, now, of course, I'm not being biased, but I noticed that you're wearing a Liverpool jersey, uh, which means uh, either you are a Liverpool fan or uh, are you also a fan uh, and loves to play football or you're just a pure fan who likes to see football. You know, a bit more on your, you know, um, affiliation with sports okay actually you're right i am a great liverpool fan i always watch their games i never miss a single game at all because i'm a true blue liverpool fan and this is the truth so what I happens when the games sorry so uh, this is an important question so what happens if the games are like 4 a.m in the morning i'm sure they are 
those 3 a.m., 4 a.m. games on a working day or schooling day. So how, how, how do you do that? Okay, you so still- I try not to miss games as much as possible. And if I have to wake up at 4 a.m., then I wake up at 3.45 a.m. and start preparing to watch the game because I'm actually a true fan. Okay. And to watch the game and all that, I have to wake up early and also go to school, right? So yes. the thing that I actually do is sleep early. So I manage my time well. After school, right. I come back home and I try to finish my work as soon as possible so that I can rest early and prepare myself for the game at 4 a.m. Um, right. I sleep by 9 o'clock usually on days where the games are at 4 or 3 a.m. And then right. I wake up by 3.45 or 2.45, depending on the time the game starts. And then I just watch the game with my dad. Yeah. Cool, cool. So, uh, um, and the good thing is that uh, I also uh, realized that your sister is also a Liverpool fan. She's eight years old, yeah. Uh, yeah. So she's also a Liverpool fan, and uh, you guys are involved in uh, football. And I think yourself, I think you are involved in some of the sports previously as well, right? Boxing. Yeah. And, uh, boxing. Maybe you want to tell us more about maybe your experience in boxing as well as in football. Okay. To start off, I actually started off with boxing first. So mm-hmm. I used to train um, at Utukan Boxing Academy for one year. And I think boxing has actually cultivated a lot of values in me, a lot of good values, such as resilience. Uh, boxing has really taught me to be resilient. And that means to actually fight harder when you fall, get up and fight harder and be tough. And that's what boxing has actually taught me. Okay. The thing that actually um, changed my life and really improved me from boxing is that Whenever I used to face challenges in the past, before I joined boxing, I used to think that if you can't solve your problems, then you should immediately ask for help without even trying to solve your problems. Mm. But then after I joined boxing, I actually realized that it's about fighting hard and trying to solve your problems by yourself first. It's about whenever you fall, it's always about standing up stronger and fighting harder so that you can be better, so that you can always live up to a better version of yourself. That's right. what boxing and, taught me. And, and how old were you when you uh, embarked? Uh, okay, anyway, how old are you now, Vishalini? Oh, now I'm 15 years old. 15, so you are in sec 3. And how old were you when you first, uh, uh, you know, started boxing? Uh, when I first started boxing, I think I was around 10 years old or 11 years old. Yeah. Okay, around. so it's early, early exposure. And uh, have you done spars, uh, um, you know, sparring in the ring before? Yes, I have. Okay. Oh, uh, really? okay. Sorry. It is something which is very exciting, but it's also very painful because the moment you step onto the ring, you feel very afraid. Because, you know, whenever like you see stuff in the movies, it always shows how the boxers are getting beaten up so badly. And then you see blood coming out of their nose and blood coming out of their mouth. The yep. first time I actually stepped onto the ring, that was the thing I was very, very afraid of. That I would like bleed all over, like my face would be full of blood. But uh, I actually realized that you know with proper guidance and like coaching from the boxing coach you will not be able to experience all these kind of things because you know obviously for movies you have to spice things up right yeah but, right right yeah. And so so in this case i'm sure uh, coach bala and his trainers have done a good job to you know make sure that you are safe and at the same time um, to able to train and, and, and have as real an experience as possible now that's fantastic and I think a uh, uh, congratulation to you because I think it takes a lot of guts for you to be up there, you know. Uh, to and I also realized that you had actually had one or two technical sessions with uh, or Sea Games boxer Diona before. Yeah. Uh, I saw some of your photos, so I think that would have been a great experience. And what about football? You know, um, um, are you involved in any football engagements uh, right now? Yeah, I'm actually part of the F17 football club together with my younger sister. So apart from um, the F17 football club, where we usually go for Saturday sessions to train with our coaches, Mm -hmm. I actually play with my sister and my dad at the park. But, you know, now because of the circuit breaker situation, I'm not able to like do this kind of training at the park uh, because of how the fields are actually closed and all that. So we're not able to train. But the one thing that I really, really miss most is training. Yeah, I actually love training football and all that with my family. Yeah, so I'm really hoping to get back to training soon. Cool. Uh, that's great to know, um, you know, um, uh, 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 the passion for sports. And it's great to know that, you know, because uh, uh, surprisingly, we had an interview with R. Sasikuma in our last session. And, you know, we were focusing on sports, you know, national football and so on. So in this case, you know, it's always good to know that as much as we were talking about your, your achievements in speaking, but I think sports had played a, a big part in terms of building you up at a very young age. 
So I think that would have uh, really, really helped you a lot in terms of your mental resilience and your exposure, I believe. Yeah. Right. Yeah. As we move on, uh, uh, let me just say hi to some of our uh, guests or our viewers. Hi, Jackie. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, uh, sending our regards to me and Visha. Oh, I have an old friend, Venu. Uh, excellent and proud of you, Iron Lady, specifically to you, Visha. Thank you, Venu. Great to see you after a long time and have comments from you. Thank you, Venu, again. And Kevin, thank you, Kevin. Uh, Visha, compliments to you. Great confidence speaker at a young age. Well done. Thank you. And uh, keep your comments coming in. Any questions to engage Visha, please do so. And we will move on, Visha. And uh, let's stop. Let's talk about, you know, uh, speaking. Now, how did you get this interest uh, in public speaking? Okay. Was it so that I... you, you... Yeah, sorry. Okay, yeah, it's okay. So I actually have this story from when I was younger. So, okay, how did I get interest in public speaking? A lot of it actually involves my dad training for his own public speaking competitions and me just sitting down there quietly in a corner, helping him and watching him train. Mm -hmm. I think that is the most important part of my um, interest in public speaking. That's what actually cultivated my interest. A lot of the times when my dad started preparing for competitions, I would actually always help him in these kind of minor jobs. Like, uh, for example, you know, taking the timing during the recordings and maybe holding the script and also like, you know, saying out the script and reading out the script. Those were like the minor things that I was really doing to help my dad prepare for his competitions. Right. But so uh, that, uh, yes. when I was seeing him doing all these kind of things, like seeing him speaking and reading out the script, practicing like 15 to 20 times straight nonstop, I would usually be on the verge of sleeping and I'll be super bored. But what actually kept me going was more than his script, I was seeing his body language, seeing the way he actually communicated with me because I was the only one in front of him during the practice sessions. So mm. I would always see his body language and his movements. And that really made me feel like, hey, speaking is not only about your voice. It's not only about the words that you say, but a lot of it actually involves your facial expressions and your body language. So I realized that speaking is something that I could be good at with training. And it was something that I was very interested in because I would always see my dad preparing for his speeches. Right. And, and so uh, from what you have learned at a young age that uh, speaking is based on three key elements. Uh, you're talking about body language. You're talking about uh, the verbal. And, and, and what about the tonality? You think that was also an important thing? Because when I saw your video previously, all your previous videos, especially on YouTube, um, I realized that your tonality was awesome. There were a lot of comments by viewers saying that, you know, you had a very good pitch and you know how to actually play around with your tonality. So is it something that you also knew at the point of time or it was a process that you learned along the way? I think it was something that I learned along the way because when I was younger, I was more interested in the body language of the speaker rather than the words and the tonality. But then now, you know, as I'm learning, I'm still learning actually as a speaker, I'm still trying to improve myself. I actually learned that tonality is equally important because it allows you to emphasize on your words and the sentences. And mm -hmm. that's why I feel that, you know, apart from body language, apart from the verbal communication with the audience, tonality is especially very, very important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So, uh, Vishalani, you know, as you were saying uh, that your interest came about when you, you know, saw your father preparing for competitions and so on. Now, uh, maybe just another question I would like to ask you, uh, more specific to uh, this, is, you know, but uh, I'm sure that you had some kind of interest in speaking, but, uh, you know, what was your motivation? You know, when was your first taste of um, going up to the stage or, you know, think about, you know, uh, uh, being a competitive speaker? You know, uh, when did that start? Or how did that start, actually? Okay. Uh, when I was in P1, uh, in primary school, actually, I had many opportunities to go for a lot of competitions, especially those Tamil public speaking competitions. Yeah, those inter-school Tamil public speaking competitions was something that I was really involved in. And because uh, my Tamil was quite good, I'm not going to lie, actually, Tamil is really my best subject. Because okay. I was good at speaking in Tamil, my teacher actually approached me and asked me, hey, Visha, do you want to go for public speaking competitions? And I was kind of up for it because seeing my father train for his competitions, I immediately thought that I was good at it. But then I realized that I needed a lot more practice. So mm -hmm. I actually approached my dad and I told him, 
uh, Pa, can you please, you know, train me for these competitions because my teacher is asking me if I wanted to join. And my dad agreed. And so we trained. So as we train and we train for the competitions, I realized that public speaking is something that I really love. And that is, that, that is something that I'm really, really interested in. That's why I, you know, I kept um, training harder and I kept going for more and more competitions. And that allowed me to realize that public speaking is something which I really, really wanted to pursue when I grew up. And I really wanted to keep on going for more competition so I could improve myself and gain more exposure. So I actually give credit to those uh, primary school Tamil public speaking competitions because I think that co those competitions also played a part in cultivating the love for public speaking in my heart. And uh, boy, definitely, I think uh, today, uh, compared to what I had uh, looking at my white hair, you know that, you know, uh, it's many, many years ago in my primary school. The, the chances for us, I mean, those days I remember we had, you know, essay writing competition, whether it's Tamil uh, mm. or any other second language or even uh, English for the matter. We had, you know, essay writing competitions, you know, reading competitions and everything, but uh, not much of a, a, a speaking competition. Not much. But I think today, uh, when I look at the situation, schools are uh, really giving the students a lot of opportunity to do that. I mean, there are a lot of uh, within, you know, inter-class competitions and then followed by they have school level and then followed by, you know, uh, inter-school level and national level. So I think uh, it's a lot of exposure that was given to you. So definitely, you know, I'd like to at this moment of time, thank all the teachers in the schools, you know, for giving our students the opportunity uh, to come out there. And I guess you are one of them. Uh, you, you were given that opportunity. And I, I guess it's also a case when um, when opportunities are given, you decide to take on that opportunity, you know, to take up the challenge yeah. and the opportunity. So, Bisha, a, a question. So, if I ask you um, that, I'm sure you know uh, uh, you are you had an interest in speaking at a young age. You were exposed by your father, but uh, if given a choice, or, or, or if I ask you this question, that uh, are you a good speaker uh, because of your natural talent or because of hard work? Uh, what is the weightage you will give between talent and hard work? Okay, natural talent, I would say um, 15% or maybe, okay, let's just say 20% and hard work, I would give it a 80%. All right. Because okay. I feel that like, even though you have the natural talent, nothing and nothing can ever beat hard work. Hmm. Because the harder you train and the more you gain exposure by going for these kinds of competitions, the more you will get better at speaking. Because yeah. speaking is something that you can't expect to be good at from the start. It yeah. is something that you need a lot of practice. You need to communicate with the audience. You need to see yourself standing on the stage and you need to visualize yourself speaking to the audience. That's when you'll actually get better. All right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, we, I would like to just take some time, uh, Visha, uh, uh, to, uh, to ask some questions that our viewers have for you. But before that, I would like to say hello to some of the viewers. Uh, hi, Zubi. Thank you so much uh, uh, for joining us in the chat. And hello, Banan. Um, and uh, we share a compliment for you. Well done. Keep it up and charge ahead. And we have um, uh, Shruti. Uh, I think she looks like your friend. So hi, Visha. She says hello to you. And we have another comment by uh, Venu again. Hi, Venu. Welcome back. And a humble and hardworking lady, a great inspiration for young women. Right. Uh, we will definitely come into that, you know, uh, being an inspiration uh, uh, for for others, you know, uh, I'm sure you have some things to share in that topic, and you can definitely be an instrument of change. Keep soaring for greater heights, uh, Vishalini, and thank you so much, Venu. Now we got two questions for you. Um, now one of the question is hi, Iskanda. Now he has a question. Uh, may not be uh, in terms of, uh, but it's sports related. Now how would you inspire other young game changers, uh, and uh, would you consider starting a movement for young changers? You know, uh, would you like to share, uh, maybe is there uh, uh, anything that you like to do in, in future? Or would you like to keep this question for later? Uh, actually, I'm okay with answering the question now. Okay, sure. Okay, I think that um, to inspire other young game changers, it is actually very important because now in our society, we actually have to rely on young people to make a change to the society. Because mm -hmm. it cannot be just adults doing all the work. Because young game changers should also be able to play hard in improving the society. And at the same time, they should also hone their skills. Mm -hmm. So I believe that with my strengths, I can actually play a part in helping them to improve themselves. And using their strengths, 
they can also you know teach me stuff so that i can also learn from them so it's always i feel that um giving and taking is very important i can share my skills with them and i can share my knowledge about public speaking and certain sports with them while they can you know play their part to share their knowledge with me and that way i believe that we can make the society a better place right. um you know to really improve the world and to improve ourselves at the same time as young game changers great great and and there are a lot of questions in regards to the young game changer which i will definitely um, um get into the details uh in a while in the later part of our interview we have another question uh, now before i go into uh, zubi's question uh, there's another question by iskandar again um it's sports related uh, avisha would you consider changing a football team you support um before you answer this question i think your parents have done a good job to you know inculcate the correct values to choose the right team i think it's excellent <laughs> But again, yeah. you know, we have a viewer telling you that maybe would you like to change uh, the team that you support? So, what are your uh, thoughts about this? You know, would you change uh, the team that you you support at this moment, which is Liverpool? Of course not. I would actually not change the team that I would uh, support. I would always support Liverpool forever. But I would like to ask Mr. Iskandar if he would like to change the team that you would like to support. So, okay. would you like changing um, your team and start supporting Liverpool? because i think that by supporting liverpool you'll never make a mistake yes uh, it seems like the way the questions are going i think soon liverpool uh, bishalani will be representing to recruit uh, uh, future supporters for liverpool so uh, iskandar i think uh, bishalani has a question you can think about it uh, we have another maybe 40 minutes of the chat to consider you know uh, joining uh, her uh, as part of the liverpool support team so you can consider that uh, i thanks for the question iskandar and thank you for uh, answering uh, bishalani we have another question from uh, zubi thanks zubi uh, once again for your question uh, bisha how do you think the digital world will support your speaker aspiration in future i think that um the digital world is very important right now because even during this circuit breaker period a lot of us actually rely on technology to help us you know go about our daily lives so i believe that if we can stand in front of an audience on the stage as speakers and present our speech to actual people sitting down there then of course we can try presenting our speech to people through the digital platform i think anything is possible even you know through these live chats um that battery lab actually you know um starts and battery lab actually invites um professionals around the world and around the country to actually speak with them and interview them i believe that this kind of digital platforms will really help to change the world because we can reach out to many other people because when we are standing on the stage and we are speaking to a particular group of audience we can only impact the people that are sitting there with our words mm -hmm. but when we go through the digital platform and we use the digital platform then i strongly believe that we can impact many other people around the world we can even you know uh, allow international uh, people from other countries like you know on an international platform to listen to our speeches and you know listen to how we speak so that we can learn from them and they can learn from us yeah i think the digital platform is extremely important but wow. Thank you, thank you, uh, Vishalini, and I think uh, you you were very right. Uh, it's a good question, Zubi. Um, uh, in fact, I, uh, it, right now, if we look at the last two months, we've been see, uh, you know, we've been seeing that first of all, uh, we have a lot of people going into the digital or social media platforms. You know, there's a big, uh, um, a big rise in people, you know, visiting the social media platforms, and we can all notice that there are a lot of live chats going on, a lot of activities in the in the digital space going on right now. Uh, well, uh, initially, yes, we have talked about um, digitalization and so on. But today, I think uh, it has been a case where that's the best and the only way to engage people out there. So I think, yes, um, Michelle, you are true. You are very, very true that uh, there is a lot of exposure. Uh, and in fact, a lot of us, including myself, we started realizing that, look, you know, as much as we want to be speakers out there um, in life with live audience uh, in an auditorium or in a, in a big room, uh, but I think it also makes the same impact uh, when you are up in a digital front, uh, in a social media platform, and you are able to reach internationally, in fact, from wherever you are seated, even in your living room. Yeah, thank you so much. And uh, Zubi, I hope that answers your question. But we will definitely be going uh, into details or deep dive into the area of uh, how Vishalani would like to uh, you know, use digital platforms for her future uh, plans uh, as a young game changer. We will definitely go into that. All right, Bisha. So we will move on. Um, uh, we have very good engagements. You know, uh, a lot of questions for you. In fact, so we will be going through as we are moving on. Now, uh, 
Pisha, let's talk about your national champion. You know, you are a national champion for uh, public speaking. Uh, you, you won the competition. I think uh, about last week, uh, the video was played up on uh, Facebook again. Uh, it came live on YouTube uh, by the organizers themselves. And I think there was what close to about what, three to 5,000 views or even much more. And, and I think, uh, and, and how did that impact you? First of all, you know, how does it feel, you know, to be a champion national level? It feels very exciting to be a champion on, on a national level, actually, because I believe that um, becoming a champion is on, not only for the position or for the title that you receive, mm. but it's about using your victory to actually impact lives out there. All right. Actually, so, um, before I went for the competition itself, I was watching this movie with my family. It's called Dangal. You can actually watch it. It's a great movie. It's actually about a father who um, trained his two daughters to become wrestlers you know, in the Olympics level, in the Olympics platform itself. So one a quote that actually um, really impacted me was the quote when he said that when you win a silver medal or if you get a second prize, you will only be remembered for days, for a few days or maybe a few weeks even. But when you win the gold medal or if you win the first prize, you will be remembered forever. I think that is the quote that really impacted me because I feel that when you're a champion, people will remember you. They will remember you for what you've done and how you've actually impacted the society. So it applies to public speaking as well, because as a champion, people will look up to me for sure. And I don't want anything. I don't want the position. I don't want the title or anything like that. But the one thing that I actually want is to make sure that people can learn from me. I think that that is very important because being a champion is always about teaching people and it's always about educating people on how they can improve. Like mm -hmm. I learned public speaking from my dad, who is also, you know, a champion in public speaking. So um, when I learn from a champion himself, I actually believe that people can also learn from me and they can benefit themselves. So when they become champions, then other people can learn from them. So I'm starting a cycle. It goes like a cycle where a champion teaches another champion. That's why I believe that when you have a platform to influence people, you should use your platform very well so that it can really impact other people, not only on a national level, but also on an international level. Mm. All right. Thanks, Risha. And uh, another question we have uh, from Tana. All right. The question is, uh, from a student's perception, how do you think parents can contribute to a child's growth in terms of aspirations, goals and learning? You know, maybe, you know, you, you can talk about that, uh, you know, from, from the receiving end, of course, you know, from the receiving end. Uh, okay, from a student's perception, how do you think parents can contribute to a child's growth in terms of aspiration, goals and learning? I think from a student's perception, one thing that parents can do is actually support the students. I believe that um, as a student myself, I don't think I need any uh, material objects. I don't need anything like money. I don't need all that kind of things. I just need my parents' support, and that is very important to me. Um, so far, my parents have actually been doing that. They have been giving me a lot of support in terms of public speaking and sports. Like, when I actually wanted to join boxing, like, um, you know, I wanted to join the sport of boxing, I wanted to join u 2 can Boxing Academy, my parents were never skeptical. Like, they, were, they never doubted me. They never thought that, oh, Visha, boxing isn't for girls. They never said that kind of, you know, ridiculous remarks. They always, you know, supported me and they always say that, Bisha, whatever you want to do, I believe that you can do it. And I think that has stayed with me because I strongly believe that um, to, you know, to gain success for every um, child for or for every student to gain success, I believe that the number one people who should always support them and have their back is their parents. And I believe that that is very important because, you know, if you don't have your parents' support, then obviously the kid won't be able to go further because they would feel very demoralized and motivated and they would feel like hey my parents don't support me and if my parents don't support me how can i achieve this in my life but for example if your parents actually have your back and they support you a lot then you will feel more motivated to go further and to achieve greater things and i believe that that's very important yeah uh, thank you, Visha. Uh, excellent answer. And thank you, Dana, for the question. Uh, we have a, a, a comment from uh, Zubi. You know, very impressed with your future-oriented outlook and uh, great to take on the digital world with strong resilience. 
uh, Zubi sees a woman leader in the making, continue to be a voice for the upcoming generation. Uh, I believe, uh, Bisha, this should be a very strong uh, feedback for you that you are heading the right direction. Thank you, Zubi. And uh, I'm sure Vishalani will take this seriously and um, uh, move on. And we have a comment from uh, uh, Benu. Uh, agree, Bisha. Great movie. Uh, I think she's talking about the. Uh, um, uh, the movie that you are sharing and uh, I like uh, the way you say that you know uh, people only remember you when you got gold uh, where you become a legacy and you can make a difference um, uh, that is true that is true uh, I believe that strongly and uh, thank you Venum uh, for the comment uh, yeah we will move on we have a lot of questions for you uh, but we will move on because some of these questions will be uh, definitely addressed in a bit now, Visha, uh, uh, as we are talking about it, you know, you are a champion. You know, I'm sure everybody would have come and congratulated you and said, hey, you know, well done. You have, you know, uh, from what I know, uh, when I look at the, the, the way the competition was held, uh, it was two parts of it, right? Uh, we have 300 students from uh, all over Singapore schools, from different schools from Singapore. And then you all had the preliminary round. Uh, then I think the top 20 was chosen. And from there, you all had the finals. And this is where you all had, I think, two parts, right? Uh, first portion was your uh, prepared speech. Yeah. And the second portion was impromptu, where they give you a topic um, and you start, you know, talking about the topic for about one and a half to two minutes. So, yeah. uh, you know, it, so I'm sure you were given a lot of, um, you know, um, uh, a lot of people congratulated you, you know, you felt good about it. But maybe you can tell us, you know, how's your preparation like, you know, the hard work behind? Because not many people ask or, talk about the hard work and the preparation that you had. Maybe you want to share with us. Um, uh, how do you start preparing? Okay. So, <coughs> uh, preparation for a public speech is actually, it is not something that is very easy because uh, whenever you're standing on the stage, you know, apart from the thrill that you get speaking to the audience and all that kind of thing and engaging them, I think stage frights are very normal. Even to this day, I actually get stage frights even after all those numerous competitions that I've participated in, till today I actually get stage frights and my leg starts wobbly, wobbling and I get shivers and all that kind of stuff. So I think that um, to prepare for that, you, you actually can't prepare for that because you know everyone gets stage frights. It's actually something which is um, impossible to prevent. It's something which is very natural. But apart from that, rather than worrying about getting stage frights, I think that you can prepare um, more on giving and executing your speech in a very well manner that people can never find fault in your speech. I think that is something that you can really prepare for. So what I did was instead of um, focusing on the fact that I'm going to get stage fright or on the fact that I'm not sure what topic is going to come from my impromptu speech, I can actually start focusing on how I want to execute my prepared speech how I want to execute and, you know, say out my prepared speech. I think that's the most important thing because if I train harder for the prepared speech, then there's a high possibility that I will perform well for it. So I don't have to worry about the other segments. So what I did was I, I actually trained like, you know, many hours back to back. I actually take the speech like maybe like 20 to 30 times, you know, back to back and I didn't stop because I had to memorize the whole speech. And I never, never want to use a script, stand on the stage and read out the script because I believe that public speaking is about engaging the audience. So when you're looking at the piece of paper and you're telling out your script, then it's not public speaking at all. It's just a reading session. So I strongly believe that to engage the audience, eye contact and body expressions and facial expressions are very important. So that's something that I prepared for. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's true, very true. I mean, uh, there's a big difference when you're reading up a script or when you're just out there, um, you know, focusing on your body language and engaging your, your audience while, you know, the script just flows freely because you, you know what you're going to say next. All right. And, and, and apart from that preparation, you know, in terms of uh, how long did you take to prepare uh, prior to the competition? I mean, did you give yourself, uh, you know, ample time, uh, like what, one month, two months, three months? You know, how long did you take to prepare? Uh, I, okay, roughly I took around half a month to prepare for the competition. Right. Yeah, half because uh, the competition was on um, October. So October is usually my exam timing. So that's why like, it was quite stressful because of the fact that I had to juggle my exams together with the competition. So uh, it was actually a huge stress on me because I also had the expectation to uh, 
perform well for exams. At the same time, I really, really wanted to win the competition. So I was quite stressed on both sides because I wanted to achieve both. I wanted to do well in both my academic performance as well as um, the competition itself. So I believe that it's not about the amount of time you have, but it's about what you do with the given time. So in that two weeks, I really maxed out the two weeks after my exams. I actually started focusing on how I can prepare for the competition so well that I forgot about the fact that weekends even existed. So my training was every single day. I actually prepared myself back to back every single day. I said the script many times. I actually looked at myself in the mirror and I started talking to myself. It basically preparing for public speaking competition just became like facing the mirror and talking to myself and you know preparing for the speech. So that's basically what it was. Yeah, and 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 um, the last time when you were sharing uh, about your experience as a speaker uh, or the Zoom session with some of the other students, uh, I also heard you say that you were made to wake up at three a.m. in the morning and start rehearsing your speech out of that. Well, was that a planned way of training, uh, or it was like you know you just wake up and get yourself prepared anytime? What was the reason behind that? Okay, the reason behind that was that um, because I had to prepare prepare for two segments. And for the prepared speech segment, I actually had to memorize. So if I have to memorize the script, then two weeks, I believe that it isn't enough time because I had to memorize speech. I had to include the body expressions, the body language, as well as the tonality and the facial expressions. So I felt that two weeks actually wasn't enough. But then, you know, this idea came to my mind. What if I actually, instead of sleeping all the time, what if I actually woke up early at 3 a.m. to start practicing. Yeah, I think that's what really motivated me because all I wanted to do was win the competition. So mm. I had to wake up at 3 a.m. and I, you know, I just had to stop sleeping and just wake up and start practicing for the competition because that was my priority. And I felt that in those two weeks, my priorities really changed because sleeping and resting wasn't my priority anymore. You know, even though after exams, students just want to rest, they just want to watch Netflix and they just want to sleep, right? But if I really wanted to win the competition, then I had to realize that I had to buck up, I had to pull up my socks and I had to wake up at 3 a.m. So if I have to wake up at 3 a.m., then I have to wake up at 3 a.m. because there are no other excuses that I can give. No, I can't hear you. No, I can't hear. No. No.
Hello, yeah, apologies. And hi, Visha. Hi. Yeah, welcome back, welcome back. Uh, apologies all, uh, there was a minor technical issues, but nevertheless, it's all about life, right? Uh, you know, you have adversities, you go out there, you settle the things and we are back. And yes, Vitalani, uh, coming back to your question, right? So, um, you know, what were the, 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 the challenges that you faced? You were telling us that, you know, you used to um, wake up in the morning, you know, at 3 a.m., in fact. Uh 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 uh
Hi. Yeah, hi, Visha. Hi. Yeah, uh, apologies once again. Uh, uh, there were some technical issues, uh, but it's okay. We will move on. Uh, and Visha, so we were talking about, you know, what was your mindset during uh, the competition itself? You know, uh, I, I knew that you, you went in there to win. And so what was your mindset at the point of time? And how did you actually compose yourself? Okay, I think composing myself was one of the most difficult parts. Because I believe that all the other 20 competitions, uh, competitors, you know, um, including me, all of us were actually quite good in public speaking because out of the 300 people, only 20 people were selected. And I was actually quite surprised because I was very scared, you know, during the selection round, I was actually very scared that I wouldn't be selected. But, you know, fortunately, I got selected because I um, worked very hard and I practiced a lot. So... Okay, going back to the part where I was supposed to uh, compose myself, I think that was very difficult because, you know, all the 19 contestants, apart from me, they were actually very good in what they did. Public speaking, they were like one of the tops in their school. So I actually thought that it would be very difficult to win them. And yeah, that was what I was very worried about. So I constantly asked my parents, you know, whether I was good enough, whether I could win them during the competition. And I think those were the things which really made me feel scared during the competition itself because I was always comparing my talent and comparing um, where I stood to them. And that's what actually made me feel worried a lot. So um, to compose myself, I just had to breathe in and breathe out and I had to pray a lot because I think that's what really made me feel composed and relaxed. And I also prepared myself by visualizing myself standing there on the stage and speaking and engaging the audience. I always had um, the thought that whenever I st stood on the stage and I actually spoke and I actually said my speech out loud, the audience would always have a positive impression of me and my speech and not a negative impression. Um, I think that throughout um, this, the preparation for this competition and when I actually um, you know, presented this competition, uh, this speech in front of my CCA members you know, for the trial round and the practice rounds in school itself, there were a lot of positive comments, but at the same time, I actually received quite a bit of negative comments because my speech was about empowering youngsters and um, telling, that, telling them that somebody else's opinion does not have to become their reality. And that is actually a quote by uh, Mr. Les Brown, a very renowned public speaker. So I think that a lot of comments that I got were like, this speech is too cliche. Or maybe, um, maybe you should, um, you know, act your age and, you know, say a speech which relates to youngsters and something like that. I think that I was worried um, about the negative comments that people would have of me and the negative impression that people would have of me after listening to my speech. But I think that my parents' support and encouragement actually, um, they, it actually um, made me feel that I was good. It made me feel that I could win the competition. And... One thing that I learned from this experience is that we should never let the negative thoughts and the negative opinions of people flood our mind. Because once we let the negative thoughts and opinions of other people flood our mind and occupy our mind, then, you know, we're just going to be more demoralized and discouraged and we're not going to be able to do what we plan to do. So the most important thing that I learned from this experience is that we should Never let the negative opinions of others hinder our path and hinder our goals. Because if we do that, then we're going to lose focus and we're going to go out of track. Yep. And there was once where I actually let the negative comments um, hinder my mindset. And it actually did not um, have a good outcome because I did not do well for that particular competition at all. But I think that, you know, um, at my age, it's supposed to be a learning stage because I'm still learning and I'm still young. So I still have many many more years to go and i believe that i can learn more as i go for more competitions like this yeah and uh thanks visha i think it's a very important point um not only for youngsters or students but i think including uh, uh business owners or, or, or even adults like myself you know uh, that it's important to decide or to have uh, non-toxic people beside us and choose what we want to take in you know if you think that certain comments are from people uh, negative are trash. I think it's important that we are able to uh, decide what is the information that we want to take in and what are the information that we want to just leave it out. I think that is a very important point which uh, goes across all different ages. 
at different stages of our life, in fact. So that was a very good point. And thanks, Fisha, for that. I really uh, think that was a very spot on. Now, another thing is that, of course, uh, as we all talk about, uh, you also shared about a uh, uh, specific failure you had, um, you know, in a particular competition. Now, uh, what are the struggles, you know? Uh, because, as I said, when there's achievements, when you have achievers out there, people always talk about uh, the achievements they have done, you know, but uh, that's just one milestone. But I think before an achievement is done, I think there are a lot of struggles, a lot of hard work, uh, a lot of uh, failures, a lot of humiliation, you know, that, 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 that happens. So in your stage, you know, uh, because of your exposure, what are the kind of struggles? You, you did share that, you know, a lot of comments on naysayers. But what other struggles and challenges that did you have um, during this preparation of your, of your speech competition? I think that, um, okay, before I start sharing about my struggles, I would just like to say something. Most of the time, when people actually see you win a particular competition, it could be maybe a sports competition, or it could even be a speech competition like myself, like how I won the particular speech competition. A lot of people start assuming that you were already good from the start. But that's actually not the case. Because people don't see like the struggles that you had to go through, and all the obstacles that you had to go through, and all the obstacles that you had to overcome in your pathway to become the champion that you are. So... I think that I had many um, disappointing and even embarrassing moments in my whole public speaking journey. And one of it was actually one Tamil public speaking competition which I took part in when I was P4. Though that competition, I was supposed to actually dress up as a Tamil historical figure, as an Indian historical figure actually. Her name is Kannagi. I was supposed to you know, dress up as her and I was actually supposed to say a speech and talk about her life, like talk about her life and how she's empowered many women, not only in India, but also in an international level. So I had to talk about that. And then it was also like a costume dress up competition because I also had to dress up like her. And I wasn't even prepared for the competition. I didn't prepare well enough. And I was also very afraid because I was scared that the other contestants could do better than me and the other contestants could win me and I wasn't as good enough as them. So I think those were the things that really hindered me at the moment. And I was so embarrassed because when I, when after I actually said the speech and after I actually talked about how Kanegi empowered many women, the judge actually just told me on my face that I was not good enough and I wasn't going to make it to the next round and I was not even going to win the competition. Mm. I think that was something which really hurt me the most because I realized that the judge only told me this because I wasn't even prepared for the competition. I didn't even prepare well enough for the competition. And I think it taught me many things. Uh, first thing it taught me that you should never let these kinds of disappointments actually get to your mind. And you should never use these kind of disappointments as a reason to tell yourself that you're not good enough. You should always take these negative things and these um, obstacles that you face in your life as a learning point and as a learning challenge. You know, when I was P5 or when I was P4 and um, I had this competition, the Carnegie competition, which I was talking about, I actually immediately thought and I had a negative impression of myself that I wasn't good enough, that I was never going to win another public speaking competition ever in my life because I failed this particular competition. But let me tell you something, that is not the truth because it's always about improving yourself. Even after that competition, I actually cried a lot. To be honest, I cried a lot because... I knew that I wasn't going to be able to win that particular competition. But I also didn't realize that there was so much more to my life. There were so many other competitions that I could win. And this was not the end. There was something I didn't realize when I was P4 because I think I wasn't matured at that point in time. But when my parents actually spoke to me and they showed me the other opportunities that um, you know I could experience in my life, I actually believe that this competition wasn't the end at all because there were so many other things that I could look forward to in life. So I think the most important pointer that I can learn from this is one failure does not mean the end. Just because you fail once doesn't mean you're going to fail all the time. But the same thing happens when you think like this. Just because you win once doesn't mean you're going to win all the time. So if you win once or if you fail once, it doesn't mean anything. It just means, and it still means that you have to keep pushing and working harder than you used to before. And that's what I learned in my life because I'm still learning now. 
and you know as i learned and as i age as you know i'm now 15 right so as i grew up i'm also learning many more things and now that i'm 15 years old i'm actually learning from the adults around me from my parents from my relatives from uh, my friends from my teachers i'm learning from all of them that this is not the end i have so much more that i can achieve in my life once i grow up so i should always stay motivated keep motivated and work hard cool um uh, we got a, a proud of you visha from uh, uh, madam kalyani panja uh, thank you so much we have a question uh, visha um, from Benu, um, uh, how can you encourage students in your age who are labeled as introverts by society? Can they be professional speakers like you? I believe that anyone can be professional speakers. You, you are not, you don't have to be cut out. You don't have to be born an extrovert to be a professional speaker because there are many extroverts out there who they can make friends and they can talk. But there are also many introverts out there who are better speakers, who are better public speakers than the extroverts out there. So I believe that even if you're an introvert or extrovert, you can always become a great public speaker by training and working hard. Actually, uh, I used to think that only people who uh, were outgoing and were friendly and who could speak with confidence on a daily basis were cut out to be public speakers. But you know something? I was actually wrong about that because Public speaking is a skill. And to actually improve a skill, the basic thing that you need to improve a skill is practice. So anyone, and I can say anyone, can actually improve their skill by practicing more and more. Because if you practice, you're going to get better at it. I believe that practice does not make perfect, but it actually makes improvement. So the more you practice, whether you're an introvert or extrovert, you'll actually get way better at it. Because I can't consider myself an extrovert because I'm sort of like in the middle. I can, you know, get along with people well, but it's only my certain group of friends that I'm comfortable with. So I could also label myself as an introvert and also an extrovert. But then I realized that for public speaking, it doesn't matter whether you're an introvert or an extrovert. It only matters how much you practice and how much hard work and passion you have for public speaking that can make you achieve and, you know, go to greater heights. In that particular aspect yeah thank you uh visha and uh, to benu uh, something that i would like to also add on to what visha said um uh, which i learned uh, not long ago from uh sasi kumar uh, where he says you know uh, nature and nurture where yes there are some who could be extrovert uh, and they are able to naturally you know have the talent to speak well and everything but i think a lot comes in in the way they are being nurtured uh, the exposure for them the, the, the practice or the hard work that they put in, I'm sure anyone, I believe, as what Visha said, can be a good speaker. And once they have the confidence, they build their confidence, they have platforms where they go there, they showcase, you know, it becomes more of a motivation for them, an intrinsic motivation for them to do better. So uh, thank you, Visha. I think uh, it was a, a very good question by Venu. And thank you so much for your answer. And... Uh, Visha, we will move on uh, so that now that you are champion and, and you also highlighted that, you know, these competitions are actually just a benchmark for you. You know, it's like a journey for you. It's not the end. Doesn't mean you win a competition, you become a champion and that's it. You know, I, I like the part where you say that, you know, never think that you are the best and you are already there because you complacency will set in. And that's, that, that is usually the downfall for many out there from your um, uh, experience in terms of uh, observing others and through your, your readings and so on. So what's next for you? You know, you, you want a national speech contest. Of course, you can go for your uh, national speech contest next year or expose yourself for more speeches. But, but for you, you know, what, what's next? Because I also noticed that you call yourself or you look into, you know, becoming a young game changer. So, you know, so what's next? Uh, okay, what's next for me? Yes, I can actually, you know, go on to participate in like several public speaking competitions. But I believe that my life shouldn't have to revolve around school, CCA and just participating in public speaking competitions. Because I believe that success means helping people and improving their lives. That's what I actually strongly and genuinely believe in. That success, it means that making improvements to other people's lives while also making improvements to your own life. That's why I strongly believe that I would like to start a movement to actually help students my age 
to improve not only in public speaking, but also other aspects and other um, things that they're interested in. For example, you know, some students, public speaking might not be um, their cup of tea. And, you know, for them, they might be more interested in sports. Uh, they might be more interested in other stuff. Like, for example, they would like um, to, you know, go into poetry and writing and that sort of thing. So I believe that if each of us garner on our strengths, on our respective strengths, then we can become greater, you know, we can become bigger than we think that we can be. Hmm. Because I believe that we should always rely and depend on each other's strengths because when we work with um, each other as a team, then we can achieve more than as compared to working alone. Because teamwork brings you to greater heights. So I would like to start a movement to help young people just like me um, to improve their lives and to also you know, go to a higher level so that they can also become a game changer, just like how I aspire to be a young game changer. Right. So um, so I, I will say the young game changer is more of a movement that you like to begin. I, that's your next journey. Interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. Uh, something uh, that's coming up from a 15-year-old and uh, you have clearly proven that age is never a matter in terms of making a difference. And, uh, you know, uh, would you, you know, a question from Iskandar, uh, now that we're talking about, uh, you know, game changers, right? Uh, you know how you know how would you inspire other game changers and would you consider starting a movement while you answer the question uh, for the young game changers like uh greater than but i think uh, it's something that you have already answered this question uh but the question i like to have to add on to iskandar's question is you know um what inspired you you know to to, to go to in, in this path you know usually you know uh, if you win a competition you see yourself as a national champion um i'm sure uh, it's like, hey, you know, I'm a national champion. I'm getting recognition. I would like to go for more competitions, you know, get more awards. But what inspired you to want to start a movement like a young game changer? Um, uh, you know, is there any specific thing? Because before we go on, one thing I realized about you uh, uh, is that most of your speeches, right, uh, there was one speech that I remember you actually went up with the boxing gloves, you know, and you, you spoke about eggs, you know, uh, and, and yeah, like advertising, uh, uh, competition where you went up there and you talk about eggs and you were like completely wearing a boxing attire uh, on stage you know and yeah. i'm sure and i'm sure people would have told you hey, you know what are you trying to do and everything and even in your competition when you went for the national uh, speech contest you were actually wearing a big yellow specs or spectacles and you started with that you know uh, making yourself look uh, different from the rest so you know uh, are these things that you you practice on the ground why do you do those things? Is this something that you want to do differently? And is this why you call yourself or want to start the movement of young game changer? Okay. Um, firstly, I believe that a game changer is someone who does things completely differently from what normal people would do. So you're not abnormal, but you're sort of abnormal. So you kind of do things that normal people wouldn't dare to do in the first place itself. So I think that uh, being a young change, game changer is extremely important because it allows you and gives you an opportunity to do things differently and look at another perspective. I mean, why would you want to focus on the same thing if you could go on a different path and you could achieve different things than people would normally achieve? I think that's something which we should really explore and we should really look into. And I believe, okay, Greta Rundberg is someone who focuses a lot on climate change, but I'm more of a person who would like to improve people's lives in a way where they use their own skills to improve themselves and improve other people around the world. So, for example, my passion is public speaking, and I would like to motivate people, motivate other students, especially, you know, in my age group, teenagers, I could say, I would like to motivate them to use their strengths to improve the world. As an academic um, and education is very important. Academic qualifications are very important because it's the tool to bring you to the next level. But I believe that apart from academic qualifications, there's another very important aspect, and that is called skills. Because skills, if you don't hone those skills and you don't improve those skills, then they won't be useful to you. They won't be useful to you in your future. So I believe that as a young game changer, I would like to motivate others to look away, look at another perspective apart from their education, apart from the academic aspect. Focus on the things that they are interest in, interested in. Focus on the things that they are good at so that they can improve their lives and they can also improve the lives of others around them. 
I think that is very important. Oh, that's that's great, Bisha. I, I, I'm seriously inspired by uh, you know your thought process of making use of your passion, making use of your strength to make an impact. And uh, coming from you at such a young age is definitely you know uh, inspiring. And now that uh, you say that you want to be the game changer, you want to encourage and then uh, inspire you know people out there, you know young 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 people out there, younger generation within your age group out there. So what can we expect? Um, uh, uh, you know, we had a question from Zuby. You know, are you going to use any uh, digital platforms to start something to do, to engage these students? Uh, how do you intend to do that? You know, social media platforms are like a big thing nowadays. They are like a fad. They are like a craze nowadays. So I believe that apart from just posting pictures about our lives, we can actually make use of these um, platforms to motivate others. Like, for example, I have an Instagram account. And, you know, using this Instagram account, I actually post videos about my public speaking journey. And I also, you know, let people have a sneak peek into my life, my regular, my daily life. So I believe that by using these kinds of social media platforms, I can actually make a difference to people. Because, you know, when you are just um, talking to people directly, you can only impact a small group of people. But when you are using these kinds of social media platforms, then you can also impact people on an international level, on an international platform, because there is no limit to anyone from a particular country. Like, in, you know, when you're using social media platforms, people from other countries can see your posts. People from other countries can see your videos. So I believe that we should really make use of the, the social media platforms that we have. And not only that, I think that as a part of my Young Game Changer movement, I would like to start a YouTube channel to um, basically maybe upload videos or live chats interviewing other youngsters my age who have a different passion from me. Maybe I love public speaking. Maybe they have a passion in sports. I would like to interview them so that they can share their experiences, their obstacles, and their, you know, their successful journey with us and also with other students around the world. So I hope to garner the support of many other students from around the world and even in Singapore, so that we together can impact many, many people's lives. Well, that's that's awesome. And I think uh, this is something that I, I feel is a very awesome initiative uh, to start your own channel, you know, a YouTube channel to engage youngsters. So it's 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 basically by us for us kind of a channel where yeah. you invite students and let them share their experiences. Now, I, I would like to take this moment to all the parents out there uh, in fact, all our viewers out there, I think uh, for those of you who think, you know, look at your parents, look at your kids, um, uh, look at your, you know, um, your, your friends, you know, who have kids out there, students, uh, maybe the age of from 9 to maybe 16, 17. You know, if you think that they have um, a certain passion and talent, you know, they don't have to be a champion, but they have the talent. They are doing something innovative. Uh, they are capable of, you know, maybe uh, inclined to music and they are doing something extremely good. Uh, please, uh, you know, you can PM me um, and I can I always link you up with Bisha. Uh, and of course, uh, I, I, I would prefer that, you know, I, we will, uh, I will always make sure that, you know, we, this will be done with uh, the advice and uh, with discussing with the relevant students, parents, of course. I think uh, feel free uh, to message even to Battery Lab or to myself, uh, PM me personally, so that I can link you up with Bisha. And once, you know, she starts the platform for the young game changer, I believe then, you know, you all can actually... Uh, uh, straight away or directly engage Visha. Uh, thank you, Visha, for sharing. Uh, I think it's an extremely, uh, I believe so, with the viewers uh, as well, that is an extremely good initiative. And as what they always said, uh, you never know whether something is good or it works until you try it. And yeah. I am very proud that uh, you know you are embarking such a challenge. Now, just to say, you know, you're 15 year old. Now, I'm not saying the same thing again, again, that you're only 15. You know, it's nothing about the age. I believe that learning and uh, achieving uh, age is never a barrier for that. But you know, what inspired you? You know, what is your inspiration? Is there a role model that you have? Is there someone that you look up to that inspired to be, or was there an incident that inspired to do what you are doing now? You know, the, oh, the willing. My first role models, you know, of course, for every kid, their first role models are always their parents. So I believe that my parents actually play a huge part in my life right now. And, you know, they actually give me support, all the support that I need to, you know, go ahead and um, improve myself and succeed in life. But, you know, apart from my parents, I believe that 
one person who has really inspired me, you know, as a woman, is actually Michelle Obama. I'm actually currently reading her book, Becoming. It's actually a very good book because she talks about her life and she talks about how you should make yourself visible. You should always use social media. You should always use the platforms that you have. Do your best to make yourself visible. And you should always make sure that that you should always make sure that you are empowered, that you have to empower yourself. And you know, apart from just empowering yourself, you should also do your best to empower the people around you. Because when you just empower yourself, you're changing your own life. But when you empower the people around you, you're changing all of their lives. So they're not only you, but they can also go on to change many other people's lives. So I believe that by playing just a small part, you know, just giving your friend an uh, encouraging comment like, hey, you're doing good. Hey, don't worry. I believe in you. I support you. I trust you in what you do. You are actually changing their lives. I believe that just by doing this small thing, you can empower them to believe in themselves so that they can make other people believe in themselves. And this is a cycle that will carry on and on and on and on. And it will never stop. Because as long as you empower others and they keep on empowering people, the world will become a better place. Well, great. And uh, for those of you, um, for viewers, and I think including Vishal, if you're aware, there's actually, uh, uh, I think, a documentary of uh, by Michelle Obama, The Becoming, on, on Netflix itself. Yeah, so, it is. So for those of you who, who do not want to read a thick book, you can actually take a look at the uh, documentary itself. It, it is quite, uh, I did manage to see the documentary. It's definitely awesome. Uh, and I think you definitely have an uh, um, awesome uh, idol for yourself. Bisha and and as you know what uh, uh Zuby and a lot of the viewers have said you know you definitely have the cut to be the next to lead you know the next generation of leaders so um and, and i like your initiative that you are doing uh, a comment by uh, sharifa maimona a great vision Bisha, inspiring book to emulate thank you sharifa thank you so much and as we go on Bisha, um so we can expect uh, uh soon uh, a YouTube channel or a live chat that will be coming up from you. Uh, and, yeah. uh, and we can expect, uh, and we hope that we have parents and many students coming forward so that we can actually have this uh, to share. Now, I have another question uh, asked to you. So, Vishal, at this age, if you are given a platform, an open platform uh, to speak and share this, would you be willing to come forward? Yeah, of course. I'll be willing to come forward to share my experiences and, you know, share my journey like the successful things that I've experienced as well as the downfalls and obstacles that I face in my life. Because I strongly believe that a lot of people can learn from my journey. And, uh, and I can learn from a lot of you know, other people's experiences. Because in my life, I'm actually not just learning from myself. There are many people around me, like my parents, my relatives, my teachers, and my friends. They have actually inspired me to be who I am today. So I actually give them the credit and I would actually love to share not only about myself, but also how these people around me actually inspired me to be who I am today so that I can also motivate others. Because I believe that when you want to be inspired and when you want to succeed in life, you should not only focus on yourself, but you should also focus on the people around you because the people around you and the environment that you are in will determine who you will be in the future. Because, of course, you will get the support from the people around you. So, obviously, they will play a part, you know, in your future and all that kind of things. So, yeah, I would like to share my life experiences in, a, in an open platform, actually. Oh, great, great. Definitely, uh, we hope uh, that, uh, you know, you will have, we will be seeing you a lot more soon. Uh, definitely in many platforms. Now, Visha, uh, uh, it's a question. Uh, what do you want Vishalini to be remembered for? Okay, uh... Uh, Vishalini, okay. I want Vishalini to be remembered as a person who always followed her principles. Because I believe that I try as much as possible, because I'm still learning and I'm still 15, I try as much as possible to live a principle-centered life. So, um, you know, I try to not let all those negative comments actually, you know, flood my mind. And I try to stay as composed as possible, although it can be difficult at times. So I actually want Vishalini to be remembered as a person who really sticks to their values and succeeds, you know, in their life with the help of the values that they follow and the, and the help of the values that she trusts in. 
And not only that, I think the most important thing that I want Vishalini to be known for is actually being a young game changer. Because a young game changer is a person who dares to do things differently from what other people would normally do. So I want Vishalini to be remembered as a person who dared to do things in a different way, to, who dared to look at, um, you know, at different things from a different perspective so that she could be special and she could also um, motivate others to look at things in a different way, in a different perspective, from a different mindset, so that they, along with her, along with me, can also understand the different view of things in life. Because if all of us look at things from a single way, from a just one manner, then we are just focusing on one route. But if we look at things from different routes, from different perspectives, then we are experiencing not only one thing in life, but many, many things in life. So I believe that we should always focus on the different things around us and not only on a single pathway. We should always try to be flexible with the way that we're thinking in life. Great, Visha. I think uh, uh, that's a very good um, um, you know, way that I look at it, you know, how you want to be remembered, you know, a young game changer, making a difference to others. So awesome, you know, uh, to be very clear. And I like the part when you say that, you know, you want to live a life where, you know, uh, uh, based on your principles and your values. Now, uh, before we move on, is there any specific example where you were in a tough situation between, you know, making a decision and uh, that's something that's, you know, within your principles and, and you know, uh, have you had that kind of a experience before that you want to share? Okay, yeah. Actually, I would like to share this experience. Basically, I think uh, this happened around a week ago. Should be, I think, yeah, uh, less than a week, actually. I was actually um, studying for election in my CCA. So mm -hmm. they wanted to choose the president, vice president, secretary, and all the rest of the roles and all that. You know, me um, wanting to be a high achiever, I actually decided to stand for president. And, you know, that was the only position that I stood for. So... Um, of course, you know, the teacher didn't inform us or anything. And we had the voting, um, we had the voting uh, going on. And the voting, we were actually supposed to choose the top four people in our CCA who could actually stand as a good president, vice president or the other role. So we were supposed to choose the top four. And yeah, I was actually chosen as one of the top four. But unfortunately, I didn't get the role as a president. Instead, my uh, teacher actually told me that I could get the role as a vice president if I actually wanted to become a vice president. But honestly, at that moment, although I was tempted to take the vice president position, I had to listen to my heart and I had to listen to my values. Because my heart strongly told me that, Bisha, if you wrote down there that you wanted to be the president and you were standing for the position of a president, and if you get the opportunity to be a vice president, then I should not be taking that opportunity because I believe that my potential is to be the president of the CCA. And I don't want to shortchange myself and the CCA by becoming a vice president because I believe that I'm capable of achieving so much more and that I can make a difference to so many people if I was the president of the CCA. While, of course, being a vice president is also good, I believe that I could have done so much more um, if I would be the president of the CCA. So I felt that, you know, I didn't want to shortchange myself. I didn't want to shortchange the members of my CCA. So I decided to, you know, tell the teacher that I didn't want any positions in the CCA because I felt that I had the potential to be the president. But honestly, um, even though sometimes, you know, you know, after like one or two days after I decided that I didn't want any positions to exco at all, I actually, you know, had this thought in my mind, I actually regretted, like maybe one or two percent of my mind was telling me, hey, Bisha, you should have just taken the position as a vice president. Why do you give up a great opportunity? But then I believe like the 99 percent of my part of my mind was actually telling me that Bisha, you did the right thing. Because if you believe that your potential was to be the president of the CCA, then you should stick with being the president of the CCA and nothing else. Yep. You should uh, just only, a, yeah, stick with your sorry, potential. Bisha. Yeah, just just a question, Misha. So, uh, um, you know, uh, now that you shared this, was it uh, the case that because you did not get uh, uh, the appointment of a president and that's why you didn't want to take up the vice president role? 
uh, because uh, you know it's quite important because the last thing we want to is actually put across or to to, to believe that um, that you know uh, you you should never accept a second position or you should never expect uh, that if you don't get what you get you know you, you will not take on anything else. I think we don't want to put out that that, that kind of a, a wrong message. So was it because of that or was there more because of the way things were done? Uh, uh, because you did say that there are some things that were not told to you. So you know, you know yeah. why why not take a president or vice president role? I mean, I I felt that um, if it's it's because somebody else uh, uh, can take up the role because uh, uh, of voting, then fine. You know, you can take up the vice president role. So why couldn't you just um, uh, take on the vice president role? The reason why I didn't take up the vice president role because I personally felt that the voting system was incorrect. I personally felt that because I wrote clearly, you know, on my application that I wanted to um, stand for president. While actually my CCA, the rest who stood for elections, no one actually stood to be the president. It was only me who stood to be the president. So uh, I believe that um, it was quite unfair because if I'm the only one who stood for president, then there's no competition, right? So I should be the one to get the vote. So I felt that the voting system was quite inaccurate as in that's my opinion yeah and then did you manage I, to put this across your teacher yeah i did of course because i believe that you know as a teacher you should always give them the respect that they need because of course they're older than you and they are people who educate you and they help to improve your lives so you should never put across a message in a disrespectful manner you should always be respectful towards them so yeah i actually expressed my feelings to my teacher and I told her that I was not too comfortable in taking up the vice president position. But of course, I would contribute to, you know, the CCA as a normal member by going for competitions, by, you know, doing my daily work as a CCA member. And of course, supporting the exco because all the people in the exco, the president, the vice president, all of them are actually my good friends. So I don't have anything against them. And, you know, we are actually on friendly terms now because I mm -hmm. believe that. There are, there are so many things that I can look forward to in life, and this is not the end. So, Mishra, uh, I mean, looking at it, uh, uh, you were saying that you can do much more just taking up the role if that's the case. So, is that one of your trigger points for you to start thinking, hey, you know, I can I can make a bigger impact to the world, you know, to, to more than just uh, a CCA? Uh, is this one of the trigger points why you are talking about or you thought about Young Game Changer um, initiative or movement? Yeah, because I think that a presidential role or any position in you know any position like president or vice president it is just a title given to you you're just a leader it's just a title given to you but i believe that just by being a normal person you can achieve so much more and you can improve so many people's lives around you because you don't have to hold a particular position you don't have to hold a particular title to make a difference in people's lives just by being a normal person you can actually improve people's lives in so many different ways. So I believe that, you know, um, a leadership role doesn't only have to be involved in CCAs. You don't only need to be in uh, a CCA, you know. You right. have to make uh, a difference in people's lives outside of CCA, outside of the boundary that you're in. And I believe that I, could, I can actually um, make a difference in people's lives through various social media platforms like Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and, in, and YouTube, of course. Yeah, and cool. Uh, you know, we have uh, definitely you have made a big difference to somebody uh, because now we have a message from Sriya, your sister, saying that you are the best sister ever. So I think uh, that is a big statement for you. Uh, you know, they always say uh, the first impact you can make is actually from home. And yes, we have done. Thank you, Sriya. So lovely of you to give this comment uh, to your mom's um facebook account i believe uh, thank you so much and and thanks Fisha. thank you so much for sharing with us you know your personal experience and i think it takes a lot of guts for you to you know uh, to stand up to your principles to be able to at the same time you know put across your message and not take up an appointment or do something that you really wanted because of uh, principles and value now i think that is important uh because in life i think uh there are a few key things that will 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 bring us far in life and one of the key thing is actually when we are anchored with strong and good values and you know principles so i think it's good because initially i was concerned you never take up the role because you thought you want a president but you never get it but i'm glad uh that uh, uh and it's very inspiring to know you didn't do it because there was something wrong that you didn't believe in and you decided fine i do not want to challenge anything i will just 
do more because I think I'm capable of doing more. I think that's awesome. It shows a lot of resilience and a lot of uh, tenacity in the way you see things and the way you want to do things. So I, I will definitely congratulate you and support you uh, in terms of uh, whatever movement you're going to start, especially the young um, uh, game changes movement because I think it makes a lot of difference. I like the way you say that uh, it is for uh, students to inspire students, you know. So I think I think that is perfect, you know. Um, and I will encourage that. We have a comment from Narin. Awesome sharing. Keep inspiring. Um, uh, compliments to you, Visha. Uh, we'll go uh, now. We we have already taken about one and a half hours, Visha. So maybe you know. Uh, 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 of course, there are a lot more questions I have for you, but I think at this point of time, in view of time, maybe you know any parting words for our viewers, especially students and parents who are currently engaged in our chat, Visha. Uh, honestly, there are a lot more things for me to share and I can keep going on and on and on. But of course, you know, there is a time limit for everything. So um, my parting words uh, for this live chat would be to always focus on the positive things in life. You know, just because you experience one uh, failure, just because you have one obstacle or a few obstacles in your life, it doesn't mean the end at all. You have to keep on persevering. You have to keep on um, working hard and moving forward. You know, be resilient. If you fall, get up and, you know, start moving forward. Because as a teenager myself, I'm also learning all these values that, you know, the people around me, like my parents, have actually taught me. So I would like to also inspire other young game changers out there to keep on moving. And the most important thing that I would like to tell them today is to never let the negative opinions of others flood your mind. Never let the negative thoughts and opinions of other people to you know, occupy your mind. Because when you do that, you will not be focused anymore. You will keep thinking about the negative thoughts and opinions and you will not be focused on the path that you want to go. So always remember that whenever you have all these negative thoughts coming in your mind, always remember that whatever you do, you are doing it for yourself. You're doing it for the positive comments and for the people who always helped you and for the people who always gave you positive remarks and encouragement. So you should always remember that do not focus on the negative side of things. Always, always focus on the positive things and that way you will achieve and you will strive and you will do very well in your life. So always remember to be a young game changer. All right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Visha. Um, you know, you've been the youngest guest in our Battery Lab channel or Battery Hub channel and you have been, uh, this is, has been one of our longest uh, um, chat himself, you know, live chat that we have ever had. I think there's so much sharing, so much energy, you know, there's so many inspirational things that you have shared and, uh, you know, and, and while you are sharing, you're down to earth, you know, the, the openness of learning and so on. So I'd like to once again congratulate you uh, for, you know, being a national speech competition winner or champion and, and encouraging many others. And I also congratulate you and wish you all the best for your future, especially, you know, uh, young game changers, um, uh, movement that you're going to start. I'm looking forward for that. And I'd like to also tell thanks to all our viewers uh, who have been, uh, you know, asking and engaging Visha with so many questions. Thank you so much. And uh, apologies, you know, that in between we had a bit of our issues. Uh, but I guess, you know, that's always about life, right? You always have challenges and it's about how we respond rather than react. So uh, thank you so much to still stick with us while, uh, you know, we were out for a while. Um, thank you so much. And with that, um, Visha, there's a last answer uh, question, uh, a qu answer from Miskanda for a question you asked whether he would like to convert and change and come over to become a fan of Liverpool. And his answer was never. Never. Uh, it's okay. uh, 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 never is not forever. So one day I hope, you know, uh, Vishalani, uh, Iskandar might change his mind. So nevertheless, we, we respect your decision, Iskandar, no problems. And again, Visha, uh, all the best to Liverpool. Uh, you have two more games and hopefully, you know, uh, by the end of the month, you know, you, you will get your championship after 30 years, you know, and all the best to all the Liverpool fans out there, all right, and, and uh, football fans out there, all right. So with that, thank you so much, Visha, and the viewers for being here today, sharing so many things. Uh, and uh, uh, it's I'm, I'm very honoured that our Battery Hub channel had an opportunity to host you and uh, to have you to share so many things. With that, thank you so much. Keep in touch. And once again, I would like to just remind for all those viewers, you know, uh, parents out there, you know, if you have students or even the students out there, if you have 
anything to share, you want to be part of uh, the Young Game Changers channel that Bishalani or the movement that Bishalani is starting, you know, uh, PM me, I'll link you up with her until the point where she had started and you can directly link up with her, you know, uh, so feel free uh, to contact us so we can actually help you to link up with her and see what we can do uh, for future. If not, thank you so much once again and Bisha, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm truly honoured and humbled to be here. Bye. Bye.